Why don't pirates take a bath before they walk the plank? They just wash up on shore. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action crime film called Army of Thieves. Sebastian is a German YouTube creator. He tells a story about a building in Munich that belonged to a respected locksmith named Hans Wagner. He was a hard-working man until his wife and son tragically died. After that, he began work on the most fantastic piece of art. He made four saves. Legend says that if you try to force open the locks, the contents will be incinerated. Hans built another safe and locked himself in it. People tried to liberate Hans. He lets from his self-made tomb, but his work is ingenious. The safe that Hans died in served as his tomb, and he was sunk into the sea with his body still inside. The three of the four safes he made, the Rheingold, the Valkyrie, and the Siegfried, are rumored to still be in circulation but their whereabouts remain a mystery. As for the fourth vault, the god Urbamarong, no one knows what became of it. He ends his video with a request to hit the like and subscribe buttons. While the video is uploaded, he solves a lock on his table in eight seconds and is proud of himself. One thing he can't seem to crack is the YouTube algorithm. With that, Sebastian returns to his dull life, grabbing a coffee with a muffin, opening the bank, and getting ready for work. His day usually consists of being yelled at by older people. As he tries to focus on something other than the lady in front of him, an exciting TV program pops up, he gives her the check, and she leaves. On his lunch break, he checks his channel, and he gets his first comment and a view. Sebastian is ecstatic. In the comments, he is told to come to a particular place to test his skills. In the evening, he arrives at the location. He tells the big tough guy a password mentioned in the comments, and he is let in. Sebastian is the last participant in safe cracking. He is still confused and tries to ask a nearby competitor, but he ignores him. The host tells everyone to start, and everyone, but him, starts cracking the safe. The host reminds them that only four people will reach the next stage. He then begins and manages to make it to the fourth place. Four contestants remain for the semifinals. The viewers place their bets, and they start cracking the safe. Neo interprets the safe first, and Sebastian is second. In the final, they have three minutes to break open the door. Neo is confident in his abilities. When the host tells them to start, Neo does, but Sebastian takes his time. He watches Neo and puts his hand on the door as if sensing the mechanics behind it. He makes small talk with Neo, and with one minute left, he has yet to begin. In the last 30 seconds, he starts and manages to open the safe with less than a second to spare. Neo tries to jump him, but Big Tough Guy holds him back. The crowd cheers and he notices a woman through them all, Wendeline. She will change Sebastian's life. Eventually, he will learn many things about her, such as that she stole her first watch when she was six, that she was 16 when her heart was broken, that she stole her first car, and had a red notice from Interpol when she was 17. But at this moment in the basement, he knows none of this. Later at home, he puts his award next to his family photos. He's proud that he had the chance to showcase his skills. In the morning, as he is getting his coffee, he is startled by Gwendoline and spills it on himself. She tells him she was his first commentator and viewer on his videos. He asks her who she is. Gwendoline replies that she is the woman who will change his life forever. She has been watching him and his habits and knows he is always alone. She tells him she has not been in the cafe for more than seven minutes. She tricked a woman's ring, someone's watch, and the man in the back corner, his gun. She comes out and says it, she's an internationally wanted jewelry thief, and she wants to recruit Sebastian. She tells him that no one knows more about Hans Wagner than he does, and that's why they need him. Because of the outbreak in America, in the next 96 hours, the safes will be decommissioned in Geneva. This is his chance to solve the three puzzle safes Hans made. Gwendoline grabs his hand and gives him an address to go to, if he decides to join them. He continues his ordinary, boring life, and at home, while watching the news about America's situation, he chooses to do it. Sebastian visits the address, and Gwen greets him. Inside, he meets Karina, who is in charge of logistics and is a master hacker. Getaway driver, Rolf. There's no one faster than him. Even Nicolas Cage would have trouble keeping up. 
The last one is their real-life action hero, Brad Cage. He watched a lot of Nicolas Cage movies when he was young. That's the whole team. Karina informs Sebastian of their plan. The Rheingold is in Paris, France, with 413 million combinations. The Valkyrie is in Prague, Czech Republic, with 235 billion combinations, and the Siegfried is in St. Moritz, Switzerland. It has 72 trillion combinations, and it is said to contain up to $100 million. All the vaults are owned by the infamous billionaire Lee Tanaka. They have no time to waste, so they head to Paris, and just as they are about to hit a credit union, Sebastian gets cold feet. They go over the plan. Sebastian goes in first and heads straight for the bathroom. Gwen follows him, takes the guard's key, and asks for a safety deposit box under a fake name. Karina entered, and the cashier was the only one who could help her, since no one else spoke English. At this point, Gwen slips out and picks up Sebastian, and they descend into the vault. Everything went as planned, and they find themselves in the vault room. The vault is called the Rheingold. Before he begins, he wastes a lot of time telling Gwen the story behind the safe. She is disinterested and wants him to start, but he continues with the story of how the gold was obtained for the safe and starts calling it his love. He puts on a song, Das Rheingold, and begins. With the whirring and cranking of some machinery inside, all the locks fall into place and the vault is opened. Sebastian and Gwen are overjoyed. She tells him it's not about the money. It's about becoming legends. He almost tries to kiss her but decides against it. Then Sebastian walks out, and Gwen follows him, successfully finishing their first test. Delacroix, an Interpol agent, has learned of the team's recent robbery. Beatrix wonders why this is important when America faces a zombie apocalypse. Screw the zombies. Surveillance cameras filmed the perpetrators, and Interpol knew they were on a quest for all the vaults, and only had two chances left to catch them. The team is playing beer pong. Brad shows his dominance, with a legitimate throw behind his back. Sebastian befriends Rolf over sandwiches and chats with Karina, who wants to make out with him, but his eyes are on Gwen. Karina tells him that Brad and Gwen are dating, but their relationship is not the best. Sebastian then visits Gwen in her room, and she explains Brad's name to him. If Brad Pitt and Nick Cage had a baby, it would be named Brad Cage. He's just a selfish individual. Sebastian tells her a story about his childhood, when he wanted a cool name like Ludwig Dieter. They talk for hours and talk more about themselves, with Gwen doing most of the talking and Sebastian just admiring her. Meanwhile, Brad is furious that his girlfriend is busy with that rat. Gwen asks him to sit next to her, and tells him after they complete their quest, she'd like to go to America, Nevada, because rumor has it that the Goddardamerung, the fourth vault, is there. The next day, the crew travels to Prague, where Delacroix is waiting for them. Brad is hostile towards Sebastian. They are at their next bank, and the crew means business. Sebastian is scared, but confident he can crack Hans's safe. Sebastian poses as an accountant and announces that he is inside. With Karina's hacking, she has his fake ID scanned positive. Karina guides him through the hallways until she has to cut off the comms. Unsure of what to do next, he enters a room he shouldn't have. The guards notice over the cameras that he has just disappeared. He meets Gwen in the elevator, and they descend to the vault room. As the doors open, they are greeted by two guards. With a few Jackie Chan moves, Gwen beats them both with no problem. And so Sebastian begins his work on the Valkyrie. He once again tells a story about the mythology surrounding it. The Interpol still haven't spotted the crew, and Delacroix gets antsy and figures out they are probably already inside. When the guards figure out someone is in their system and lock all the doors, Karina realizes they are onto them. Time for Plan B. The Interpol comes into the building, and it turns out they are in the wrong bank. They switched their safe with a more reputable bank. Brad goes in with his mask on and shoots a few guards with tranquilizer darts, knocking them out while beating up the others. He launches Plan B, the robbery. Sebastian finally starts cracking. His attempt fails, the safe handles pull back, and only one handle is pushed out. If he screws up again, the safe is locked forever. He is having trouble, but he's making progress. Then a second handle comes out, and the third. 
He manages to crack the Valkyrie and open all its riches. They cheer and embrace. They almost manage to kiss, but Karina asks for status over comms. They don't have much time. Gwen and Sebastian fill up the bags and head for the exit. Brad is about to walk out when a security guard surprises him. He distracts him and jumps off a railing. He gets into a scuffle with the guard and is shot before jumping out the window. The duo manages to escape unnoticed through all the commotion. As the car starts to move, they try to jump in. Brad helps Gwen, but when Sebastian takes his hand, instead of pulling him in, he throws him out. All the members, except Brad, looked distraught. The police are chasing Sebastian. He tries to steal a bike. It isn't very comfortable. He still manages to steal from a random passerby. I'll spare you all the bicycle acrobatics now. He manages to escape the police by riding on a narrow road and getting on a moving train. In the van, Karina tells them that Sebastian hasn't been caught yet or it hasn't been announced. The real plan was to cut Sebastian loose after the final haste, but Gwen is still upset that Brad threw him out on the street like a sacrificial lamb. Rolf was even starting to like the guy. Gwen worries about how they will take Siegfried on without him, but Brad tells her they have enough money to retire twice. For Gwen, it's not about the money. Brad's last-ditch effort to keep Gwen is to tell her he loves her, but she couldn't care less and gets out. Karina follows her and figures out how they can crack the next fault. Sebastian has somehow managed to get home, where the girls are waiting for him, though he doesn't notice them. After they discuss what to do, the course of action they decide on is to yell surprise, and Karina does, startling him and making him spill his hot drink on himself. Gwen says she's sorry. Yeah, and that's it. He says that it doesn't matter if he forgives her or not, they will leave, and he will go back to his mundane life. Gwen gives him a whole speech about how much she needs him, and that he's the only one who can crack the safe, and that they are going to make history. Sebastian sits down, takes a sip of whatever he's having, agrees, and asks about the plan. Meanwhile, the Interpol agent decides to do some research on YouTube. He searches for Hans Wagner and finds Sebastian's video and quickly matches him and the robber. The exciting thing is that the video was uploaded one minute ago and the comment is from two weeks ago. Sebastian dreams of zombies. When he wakes up, they are on their way to the destination of their last quest, St. Moritz. Interpol agents patrol every corner of the previous vault located in a casino. The vault is to be transferred in two hours. They intercept an encrypted message from the squad saying they will strike the casino at 5 a.m. It sounds too good to be accurate, but they wait until 5 anyway and enter the casino. There, a manager tells them they know about the risk and have already taken action. When he asks who told them, she says, Interpol informed them and the safe was taken one and a half hours ago. It was too good to be true. Delacroix has been played. Eight hours earlier, Karina calls the manager and tells her about the robberies, and she reschedules the safe transfer. Gwen somehow managed to sneak into a car and stay hidden, beat up the two guards, and leave them on the road. They made sure Interpol intercepted the fake coded message. They retrieved Siegfried from the casino and loaded it onto the truck, with Gwen and Sebastian disguised as guards. At present, on the road, after his usual warm-up, Sebastian puts on the music and begins to tell Gwen the story of the safe, talking to the safe simultaneously. Meanwhile, the police leave the casino, and Brad is furious that his team betrayed him, which they did not since they parted ways. He finds Gwen's location via Find My iPhone, and Karina notices it and tries to stop them, but they drive away, and the police apprehend her, but not before she manages to send Gwen her last message. Sebastian is on the sixth of seven handles. He's cracking the safe on the go. After a few sharp turns, he slaps on the safe and the gear kicks in place. He's cracked the seat freed. Although Brad and the cops are still on their tail. They open the safe, fill their bags, and Brad is waiting for them. From action hero to villain or just a jerk, Brad tries to shoot Sebastian several times, but Gwen has removed the firing pin. She and Brad argue. Sebastian cannot take it any longer and lunges at him, punching him. After that pitiful display, Gwen ties them to the truck and gets out with Sebastian. 
The police arrest Brad and Rolf. Gwen is glad that Sebastian at least trying to stand up for her. He tells her he likes her a lot, and despite the wrong timing, she kisses him. She likes him a lot too. With the money, they make their way to the boat. Delacroix has managed to catch up to them, so they have a standstill with guns drawn. Gwen makes a deal with Delacroix. He can take her if he lets Sebastian go. The agent agrees, but Sebastian doesn't. Gwen tells him she will find him, and they will solve the Goddardamerung together, yells at him, and he finally gets on the boat and leaves. When he checks his fake passport with the name Ludwig Dieter and sees that she brought him a ticket to the same place she is going, he's heartbroken. Of all the people in the world, she was the only one he wanted to be with. Somehow he knew they would reunite and solve the Goddardamerung. Sometime later in California, a woman and a man walk into a locksmith shop and find Sebastian. They show him the blueprints of the Goddardamerung and ask him if he can crack it. He smiles. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy, hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.